How to paint mist or fog with acrylic. Just jump right in. I want my fog today to be kind of a greenish cast to it. The color of your mist or fog is going to be dependent on the light source surrounding it. If it had a blue light source, it's going to be predominantly blue. But in this case, I have a green light shining through the trees in the back, so it's going to be more green. So I take a little bit of green and a lot of white, and I mix this together really well. The key to getting great mist is a lot of water. And here's an old swamp picture I have. I'm doing this for a fantasy book. This is a swamp hag. This is intended to be kind of a spooky picture. I have this old swamp and I picture a lot of mist and fog just swirling over the water here. The picture, I don't want it to be too drab. There's a lot of dark elements to it right now. And I want to lighten it up with a little of the mist. And here I have a little detail over the water that I've done some water lines, but not much. I'm just going to cover most of it up with fog. And I want some pockets of mist working forward over the picture. So I think this is going to be a really great effect. One tip for getting great mist is to use a cheaper craft style acrylic. Cheaper price wise, not quality wise. And to use a lot of water in the mix. So I load my brush and I do it almost as if I made a mistake. Oops, let me wipe this off. Just wipe it with my finger really good until it dissipates. Of course, fog is different kinds of opacity. I mean, sometimes it's really, really thick. You can't see through it. Other times it's a lot thinner. I want mine a little bit, a little thinner, and I want just pockets here and there in these bushes, this undergrowth. So I just rub it down with my finger really well. I'll include links to the style of paint I use down in the description below. Oops, made a mistake. So you go at it just like that, like you just dabbed it on the painting on accident and you're wiping it off before it dries. And sometimes you have to add more water to your brush and just go back over it. If you get it too dark, just add a little water and rub it back in and you, it'll come back to life and you can just kind of dissipate it a little more. But you have to act fast because once the acrylic dries, it's dry. It's not going to go anywhere. And that looks a little better. I'm going to go back in and darken it up a little bit. Add more water. Give it my brush. Just here and there. It's not uniform at all. There's no pattern to the style. Fog is very unpredictable. It moves with the wind. So... I want it to look accordingly. And it's a little too dark there, so I'm going to go back with water. Resurrect it. Smush it out. Be sure not to get your fingerprints in it like I just did. No big deal. Just wipe it off. And that's looking about the opacity that I'm looking for. Now I want to show you a trick here to bring depth to your picture. I'm adding a color called dark green black. And I'm going to add a little more undergrowth in front of the mist I just put down. And that creates those pockets of mist I was talking about. I'm also going to use a foliage green and mix these two together with my good old scraggly brush. It's perfect for adding leaves and brush and stuff. And I'll go right back on top of this and just dab in some leaves right in front of that old brush, and it just pushes the fog back. No great detail at this distance, so I can get away with just using this old brush to put in the indication of some old undergrowth and brush and thick swamp growth. This is the kind of thing you'd find in an old forest just like this. I'll go ahead and add some more pockets of mist in front of that, like this area. Do the same technique, just dab them, dab them off.
Yeah, I think this is looking really good. And I'm going to bring the mist over the water here a little bit. And I don't mind at all if the mist goes right over some of my water details here in these rocks, here and there, some little details I've put in, because a lot of those details are going to show right through the mist anyway. paint these at home in my home studio and these dogs sometimes go crazy they like to wait until I'm filming and then they will just go nuts I don't know what makes them bark I think they just like to add some ambience to my little video here I just go right over my rocks and that just adds more depth to the picture I do horizontal strokes with my fingers. You could do circular motions. Just make it look real misty. Like the, the movement of the air is shifting it around as this old witch paddles through the water. Again, there's no definite patterns. Just lay the paint in here and there and wipe it off. make it thicker some areas thinner in others just keep it looking natural have fun with it it's hard to mess this up once you've got the right technique once you add the right amount of water and use the right consistency of paint and this is a real fun technique and I don't like how this is looking here where it's kind of bubbled up so I go in with a clean brush add some water and smooth it down. And sometimes it, the paint just builds up so much that it's necessary to get a paper towel, which is always great to have handy, and wipe it off again. work at it until it looks right to you. I like the craft style acrylics because they are not as thick as some of the more expensive brands and they're not really as watery as watercolors either. They're just kind of a medium consistency and so they work real well with this kind of foggy texture that I'm looking for. here in the foreground getting closer to us it's right over the boat in some areas it's right over these tree trunks too make it look like she's paddling right through this mist on her way to the way to the opposite shore. No telling what she's out looking for, probably a secret ingredient for an old spell. I'm working on this book with Tessie Davis, who's a great writer, a great poet, and she's been a writer a long time. And as I started this project of folkloric creatures and characters, everything from witches to vampires to scarecrows, Cats, vampires, did I already say vampires? I think I did. Anyway, just every creature you can think of, I thought of her because she's a really good writer. And I think this is going to be a great book when we're done with it. We'll come right on down here to the water's edge. Back up here. Bend that in a little bit where it dried a little darker. And I think we've got a great picture. Guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this much as I enjoyed painting it. Thank you so much for tuning in.